Hello! Welcome to the Yana Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box just below this video here on YouTube. Welcome to uh, my weekly vlog where I chat about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet, sometimes a bit of weaving. All of the fibre craft related things. <laughs> If you are new here you are most welcome i hope you enjoy the time that you spend here and of course if you've been here once or many times before welcome back i really do appreciate you taking time out of your busy week to spend listening to me waffle on about my crafting adventures this week i have knitting spinning tiny little bit of spinning and some crochet to share with you uh, before we get stuck into that I just want to say a massive thank you to um, anyone who has um, checked out the patreon page for yarn and yarns and um, this is a new thing that I'm kind of venturing into um, I'm not very slick over there at the moment so it's very basic but um, a few of you have pledged to uh, make regular donations to help me continue to set aside the time to record the podcast so I'm so so thankful for that I know that it's not possible for everyone to do that um, and just by being here by liking the videos subscribing to the channels leaving a comment um, you're supporting yarn and yarns um, in all of those ways but I did just want to say a huge thank you to anyone who has signed up to Patreon or indeed who is able to donate to the podcast using the coffee link which is a platform which allows people to make one-off donations to the channel I truly truly appreciate that support thank you so much so with that being said let's jump in and get to the podcast content I'm still standing up <laughs> <laughs> if you have been following along um, you know that I've been experiencing, experiencing some sciatic pain and um, I keep harping on about it but um, I'm still most comfortable standing or lying down. Um, I can sit for a prolonged period of times now but it's still the least comfortable position so I figured I would just stand up to record another episode um, so yes you'll have to excuse me kind of bobbing around and moving around a little bit more than I do when I sit down. So I think I'm going to start with spinning this week because there hasn't been a spinning segment for a couple of weeks. I'm still not back into the flow of spinning. I'm desperate to sit at my spinning wheel and do some spinning on the um, fleece to fibre project that I'm working on but I'm just still not comfortable enough to sit and treadle. Last week would have been perfect um, for my e-spinner to arrive but it still hasn't arrived yet there's been a little bit of a delay um, but I did manage to get back to doing a tiny little bit of drop spindling this week. Again it's still not the most comfortable because although I'm okay standing up um, obviously I'm kind of like moving my arms around when I'm spinning and so I'm only able to do a couple of minutes at a time, but at least I have been able to do something. The first spinning project is kind of also combined with a small acquisition segment. My lovely friend Ruth, hi Ruth if you're watching, um, sent me a package this week. Earlier on in the year I lent her one of my drop spindles, um, this lovely spindle from Spin City um, with some lovely sort of dried flowers in there. I purchased this spindle on a D-stash and then I lent it to Ruth so I haven't really used this one too much myself. Ruth sent that back to me this week and she also is very, really really kindly sent me a um, braid of fibre which is this gorgeousness. Um, as a thank you for lending her the spindle which was completely unnecessary um, but I love this beautiful beautiful orangey colours um, with some sort of teal flex um, going through so I'm really looking forward to spinning this and I think the note said it was um, Blue Face Lester yes Blue Face Lester I'm just reading the note now and it's from a local dyer called Lazy Kate Textile so that's local to Ruth up in the Liverpool area as well as returning the spindle to me, um, Ruth also sent some additional fibre and I knew that this fibre was coming. Um, so Ruth is having a little bit of a de-stash and she offered to send me some beautiful fibre that she had in her stash. Um, and this is the fibre that she sent. She says it's from Cat and Sparrow. I'm not sure what the blend is, but it wouldn't surprise me if this was a merino silk because the yellow is very, very shiny. So that's kind of my, my guess. And in the package with this fibre, um, Ruth also sent this lovely um, 3D printed Turkish spindle and I decided because the spindle matches perfectly with the fibre colours, I had to spin this fibre on this spindle. So I have just started, I've only done the smallest amount um, of spindling with this new spindle. I'm really enjoying it so far. As I say, unfortunately I can't uh, stand and do too much spinning at one time. Um, this Turkish spindle has a slightly thicker shaft 
than the other Turkish spindles that I have. So that's making the feel of this spin a little bit different. It's always intriguing to me um, how many different sort of variations of uh, spindles and fibres and how they play together kind of like makes a difference to the spinning experience and as per usual as soon as I've got a spindle in my hand I can't but help give it a twirl and spin for a little bit <laughs> it's like some kind of compulsion as soon as I pick up my spindles I have to do it a little bit uh, so yeah, tiny weeny start to this project. I'm thinking there's probably 100 grams of fibre or thereabouts, a whole braid. Um, I'm not sure how much of this Ruth used, if any. So um, this will be kind of a slow spin, pick up as and when I feel like it project. Just a little bit of fun. There's a little bit of a ply back on that. Um, as and when I have the urge to do a bit of Turkish spindling. I've of course now got to wrap up the piece of fibre that I've spun. <laughs> Small beginnings but a little bit of spinning nonetheless and it's been really nice to kind of pick up a spindle again and start going on. I'm really really itching to get back into spinning but I just have to be a little bit careful about um, how much time I'm spending doing these things at the moment. A super short spinning segment, um, but it's nice to um, get my foot back in that door again. On to knitting. I have worked on three projects this week and they're projects that you will have seen very recently here on the channel uh, because I seem to have morphed into a, I'm not gonna say monogamous because I'm not working on just one project, but I have definitely over the last sort of few weeks really concentrated on just a handful of projects in enjoying doing that and making uh, sort of progress on each one of the projects so i have two sock projects to show you and a sweater project so i'll start with the sock projects and i'm working along on my sock whips for our um, summer of socks knit along and that knit along is going along a pace so thank you so much to everyone who has been joining in um, when I last looked which I think was yesterday evening there was somewhere approaching 40 pairs just under 40 pairs of socks um, over in the Ravelry group finished object thread um, there's also been quite a few posted on Instagram um, if you want to participate in Instagram, then please use the hashtag YNYSOS and I will put that on the screen now. Um, I'm trying to share as many of those projects um, over on Instagram as I can in my Instagram stories. However, if you have been participating over there on Instagram and you haven't seen your projects pop up in my stories, it's not because I don't want to share them. It's probably because you have a private account. So although I can see your projects because we're friends, um, I'm not able to share your project pictures. Um, so yeah if you've seen other people's sock projects pop up in my stories and you're wondering why yours hasn't that is probably the reason I've also had quite a few finished pairs um, sent to me via email so if you're not using Ravelry or Instagram at the moment then please feel free to send your finished sock project pictures to me at um, yarn and yarns at yahoo.com and I'll put that on the screen here as well the knit along is continuing until the 14th of September so we've still got sort of two and a half three weeks to go in that knit along um, so plenty of time to get even a new pair of socks on and off the needles um, if you want to join in um, and of course um, works in progress are welcome so if you've got socks that have been hanging around for a while um, then please feel free to pick those up and join in and I've got a couple of lovely prizes to give away um, I did a little video about the knit along um, with the details of the prizes so I'll put a link to that video um, here on the screen or down below I have been working this week on my Lemmy socks um, these have been um, on the go for a little while I've spoken about them um, many times before on the podcast these kind of turned into my beach knit project so every time I went down to our local beach I would take these along with me um, but because of my health issues I have not been to the beach for nearly two weeks now um, so I decided just to resurrect these as a nice simple project that I can do um, if I'm lying prone in bed <laughs> I can still kind of um, knit on a sock project a, a nice straightforward simple sock project without too much difficulty difficulty because I'm having to sort of like hold my project up a little bit while I'm lying down but it's not heavy a, a sock project is perfect for that um, so I'm working away on my second sock I think the last time you saw this 
Um, it's a little bit harder to juggle things when I'm standing up. <laughs> um, so I was probably around here somewhere. Um, halfway down the leg of the sock I've put in some waist yarn ready to go back and put in a heel um, and I have literally just 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 started the toe decreases so I've only got the toe and the heel to go um, and this is the second sock so it won't be long now before the lemmy socks are finished so hopefully I will have these to show off as a finished object next week and I have been keeping that project in this lovely project bag that was sent to me as a gift by Michelle hi Michelle if you you are watching um, these beautiful birds on the project bag and the um, the yarn was also a gift um, a very very generous gift from um, Andy and Ange at Attic Spin Dye and um, they sponsored a giveaway that we had on the channel um, earlier on in the year and along with this skein that they sent for the giveaway they also gifted me the Lemmy skein and I've just been so enjoying working with that yarn just knits up lovely I love the kind of spiral striping and I have plans to um, make myself a pair of short socks with the leftovers I've been wearing a lot of shorty socks um, in the last couple of months and so I want to make sure I use every single scrap of that um, lovely lemmy yarn so I'll have a pair of my standard sort of long socks and also a pair of um, short socks for the summer um, from that skein so yeah I shall be showing off the lemmy colorway <laughs> a little bit more um, over the coming months because I'm determined to use up all that yarn. <laughs> The second sock project that I've been working on this week is living in this beautiful Japanese knot style bag which was gifted to me by Julia um, who is Mindful Magpie and Julia has her own web shop so I'll put a link to that below and inside this bag is living my, let's try and prop the bag up out of the way, um, my sheep socks, oh no, stitches have come off the needles, Look, I've got a whole bunch of live stitches just hanging around there, don't know how that happened. I need to not wave these around too much and slip those stitches back on the needle. But as you can see, I'm pretty much done with the first sock. Um, I think I was somewhere in this region last week. I forgot to put a progress keeper um, on it, but I definitely was on the foot somewhere. And uh, so, yeah, first sock practically finished. Um, I haven't kitchened the toe yet because, and I've spoken about this again many times on my videos, um, I like to, if I'm going to kitchener, if I'm going to finish one sock and I still have the second, I like to set aside enough time to cast the second one on straight away. And um, these socks have like a pico cast on, which is not complicated, but it's just like an extra step that I have to think about. So although this toe has been hanging out for probably three or four days waiting to be kitchened, I haven't gone back to it yet because I need just five minutes to wrap my head around getting the second sock started so yeah it's been languishing for a few days but I know once I get back to this um, these will start knitting up really quickly because it's really fun to see the beautiful sheep emerge. Um, the yarn is by Artistic Yarns by Abby, and if you knit to a particular tension, then this field of sheep just emerges like magic. <laughs> Um, and that yarn was very very kindly gifted to me by my friend Jeanette and the final project that has seen some progress this week um, is my rift tee this is a fairly new cast on a pattern by Jacqueline C slack um, and I'm keeping that in a lovely project bag that was sent to me by Mandy um, for my birthday so thank you so much Mandy I love this it's a patchwork of all sorts of different orange fabrics and inside here is my rift and um, again if you've been following for the last few weeks you'll have seen this project start to come to life. Uh, the yarn was gifted to me uh, by Zoe of Pins and Needles and she received the yarn in a knit crate and uh, it's this beautiful orange colourway. I'm at the point now where it's looking a bit like a limp dish rag <laughs> on the needles so I'm not going to be show showing this project off to the best advantage um, but last week when I showed you this I was working on the body of this sw sweater. It's a cropped sweater um, but this week I split for the back and front and I've finished the front so that's what you can see there and I am busy working on knitting up the back of the sweater. Um, so there's not too much left to go. Um, I think I've got to knit the back, um, probably do a three needle bind off um, and then there's kind of like a 
little cap sleeve for the short sleeved version and um, which is what I am aiming for um, so yeah this project is just ticking along nicely the yarn is from um, Knits Crate as I say it's their own um, brand of yarn that I think is exclusive to Knits Crate um, Audine yarns and this is a mix of cotton linen lyocell and nylon and I had two skeins of this so I've still got a reasonable amount left of the second skein so I'm hoping um, that I will in fact get this garment out of the two skeins um, if you have been watching um, I said at the very start of this project that I wasn't sure if I'd have quite enough um, and I was prepared to rip back and um, either do some adjustments or reclaim the yarn for something else if I wasn't able to quite get a rift tea out of it uh, but fingers crossed um, it seems to be going okay so far I'll probably jinx myself um, but yeah it's looking fairly promising that I will have a rift done in the not too distant future from those two skeins Finally on to crochet and I have been still working away on the charity making that I decided to do a couple of weeks ago. I'm making some twiddle muffs for, um, well they're mostly used for dementia patients or gifted to other people as well. Um, so anyone who has any sort of sensory issues. So I know um, a lot of um, both children and adults who have autism and things like that also benefit from the twiddle muffs and I'm making these for an organisation here in the UK called Knit for Peace and I'll link their details below. Since last week I have completed a further three twiddle muffs including um, decorating them so I have got the three to show you. I also did add the embellishments to the three that I'd made before but I forgot to bring those up with me. I think last week when um, I recorded I had this yellow one as a work in progress so let me try and step back from the camera a little bit and you can see um, the completed twiddle muff along with the embellishments so that's one side and that is the other um, so I've basically just tied some rickrack and some ribbon um, and these I've tied them on really tight but they the bows can be um, undone and done back up again um, I've also threaded uh, sort of like a loose piece of yarn um, I've made sure I've sewn the ends in really well and I've put some uh, sort of uh, buttons on there so those can be kind of played with or they can slide along that piece of yarn um, I've got a button and I have found this like lion face which I randomly had in my sort of pot of yellow embellishments um, so that um, is what the yellow one turned out like and since then I also used up my um, green scraps and leftovers and I'm making I don't have a set pattern that I'm using to make these I'm just kind of chaining on as many stitches as I think uh, some of them are a little bit wider some of them are a little bit narrower um, so this is one green one and if I just overlay the other one you can see this one's a lot smaller but yeah I'm just kind of making a mixture of sizes um, so for this first green one um, again I've tied a ribbon on with a bell which I'm sure will be super annoying to anyone <laughs> <laughs> who is in the vicinity of that um, some more ribbons um, a couple of buttons and um, on these ones I also um, sort of like chained a few stitches and created a loop uh, so the button can be sort of like done up and undone um, and then I found this kind of elasticated cord to which I threaded through um, some of these big sequins so again those can be kind of like played with and moved along um, and then on the back I put that all the way around um, this particular twiddle muff and then on the back I've got another button and I have got some ribbon um, which I've threaded up with a few beads which again can be sort of like played with and the beads can be kind of moved along the ribbon and one more green um, again I've put another bell on that one some more beads just hanging off of a ribbon on a loop um, what else have we got? I've got uh, just a plain loop which I left with no sort of button and then on the other side um, a couple of these green heart buttons, uh, some more ribbon with uh, beads that it? Uh, and another sort of button that can be sort of undone and done up again. Um, and then through the top here just on this eyelet row threaded through some extra ribbon which um, I attached the bell to at the end. I've got two more in progress so I'll quickly show you those. My aim is to get these two finished this week and then um, we're 
basically in the last week of August so if I can get these two finished I'll have made eight of these throughout August so I'll package them up and send them off to Knit for Peace and then going forward I probably won't continue to make these at quite such a pace um, but my aim going forward will be to make four a month so one a week um, to send off and then I might sort of send them off every couple of months or so um, but I've got one um, in progress I'm using up scraps of um, orange and red and I had a tiny little bit of yellow left so I've added that one in so I've still got a few more um, rows of crochet to add to that before it's finished um, so yeah probably about another third um, width to go so maybe something like that again to complete that one and then I can embellish that one and I have also started one using up my white and neutral scraps so that's really blowing out on the camera um, but this one is almost done I reckon two or three more rows of um, crochet and I will call this one done and as you can see I'm implementing that same um, sort of thing where I'm um, crocheting in every now and then a loop of chain stitches so I can um, kind of add some buttons and every now and then I stick in an eyelet row as well um, because it's really easy to tie ribbons around the post of these stitches or to indeed thread ribbon through those stitches um, so yeah um, hopefully by this time next week uh, those two will be finished and I can send that package off um, I have been going great guns on using up my leftovers and bits and pieces if you watched my um, episode I think it was called how many times can I say twiddle muff um, when I started this out you'll know that my aim was to use up I've got sort of two baskets of yarn one um, full of kind of textured yarns and one full of my scraps and this one is virtually empty compared to what it was before I've got um, a little bit of orange left which will get used up um, in finishing that um, in progress one and then I've got a bag of blue scraps left and that basket will be empty this basket has actually been filling up <laughs> rather than emptying because as I have been um, thinking about my like, as I've been sat making these thrill muffs and thinking about it I've kind of remembered oh I think I had some more of that eyelash yarn tucked away in a box you know it's kind of triggering my memory and I've been collecting some more of these I think this is literally it now um, for these eyelash yarns but instead of kind of going down this basket has magically been refilling um, but the twiddle muffs don't have to have the textured yarn in but I'm using them as an excuse uh, to use up like all these bits and pieces of eyelash yarn that I won't use um, for any other projects so yeah by the end of the year I'm hoping all of that textured yarn will be gone out of my stash and off to be enjoyed for a good cause so yeah that's everything for this week I think um, I feel like I rattled through that um, I guess mainly because it's projects that for the most part you've seen before um, so I don't want to dwell too long on any of those I'm pleased with the progress that I've made this week and um, we're super busy this is the last week that I have the lease um, for the shop um, so we are busy emptying the shop this week and I'm trying to do that like a little bit at a time every day um, just to be mindful of the issues that I've had with my back and my leg I don't want to end up spending another week in bed not being able to move um, so it's going a little bit more slowly than I would have liked but hopefully it's happening um, in a way that's manageable and safe <laughs> Um, alongside emptying the shop I'm also busy gathering some stuff together to get our website up and running if you've not watched before I have until this point been running a bricks and mortar yarn shop in my local town um, the lease on the premises that I've been renting is up so I am transitioning from bricks and mortar to an online shop so that's keeping me really really busy um, but I am pleased that I have been able to carve out some time for myself every day to continue with my making um, alongside everything else that's going on that's really helping to keep me focused on and not um, feeling too anxious about everything that I have to do so yeah thumbs up for creating and the effects that it has on my mental health and I know um, from comments that I've received in the past that a lot of you feel the same many of us find a lot of solace and comfort um, in in our making I feel like I'm forgetting something but um, if I am I'll try to remember to write it down and add it to the video next week <laughs> 
Uh, so yes, I have one more video that I know is definitely coming later on in the week and it's something a little bit different. I had a lot of fun making it and so um, I hope you enjoy that when it pops up. It will probably come on Friday or Saturday and I'm not sure if I get time for anything else then maybe something else will pop up here on the channel as well. Um, but if not, then I shall see you at about this time next week <laughs> and we'll see how much that I have been able to get done um, in the coming seven days. In the meantime, as always, let me know what you've been working on, how your week has been. Um, I always love to chat to you in the comments below. I'm still catching up, but I am going through all of your comments. I do read them all and I will um, reply to you. Even if I can't reply to you straight away, I do do so love reading those comments and hearing from you. So um, please chat to me below. And until we get to spend time together again, I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. Great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.